Hello, this is Mark Van de Wittering of the Brainwagon blog, tinkering in my electronic shop again this morning. Um, I did a brief video of uh, pulse width modulation the other day, uh, just because I was testing my own understanding. Um, here's the basic deal. I have an Arduino set up here on top, somewhat upside down here. And uh, you can tell how careful an engineer I am. And down below, I'm showing the waveform that's coming off of it. It's um, What I'm doing is I wrote a program that every second sort of cycles between four different uh, pulse width modulation values. So I'm using the analog write uh, function from the Arduino to put uh, voltage out on pin 9 or 11 or whatever it is. And uh, it, you can see that it doesn't really output an analog voltage. What it does is it varies the percentage of time between the low state, which is at the bottom, zero volts, and the high state, which is five volts. And uh, this oscilloscope display shows it really nicely. Um, what I really want out of this thing, though, is a uh, voltage somewhere between you know, zero and five volts to serve as a control voltage for the voltage-controlled oscillator in the QRSS transmitter, which is this doohickey, which I showed in a previous video. So what I've done now is taken the signal from the Ar Arduino, and now I'm just showing you basically the raw, raw thing that comes out of the Arduino. But you can actually construct a really simple filter to knock off the, the black boxiness of this by taking a, uh, I have a little uh, 22 microfarad resistor and a tiny uh, little uh, 10K uh, resistor. And if I actually, oops, excuse me, I'm trying to do this one-handed, sample the voltage from the other side of the resistor. Hold on one second while I last through this thing. What you now see is that the voltage is smoothly varying. It's no longer, you know, it starts at zero, then goes up and down, and is varying among the various and sundry possible values that we've got. It goes up to about four volts was the maximum one that I'd set. The minimum is very near the base state down here at the, at the bottom line. You can see that it takes a while to settle. Um, I actually used a slightly larger filter capacitor than I probably should have. I was anticipating a one microfarad electrolytic or something in there, and I actually put in a 22 because that's what I had handy in my junk box and I couldn't find any ones. I'll probably actually take this out and fix it a little bit because the idea is to be able to send Morse code, albeit really slowly, at uh, sort of three second dit times. So if it takes a full second to settle at its new voltage, that's actually a substantial portion of the dit time, and, and I don't want it to slide that much. So I'll probably cut it down to, you know, a two or, you know, to somewhere between two and four um, uh, microfarad, something like that, or maybe, maybe I'll just go back to one. And then all I need to do is wire up the uh, final, uh, if I wire this as the input to the, to the uh, Veractor circuit, um, thanks to Hans Summer for pointing out, and many others, that, uh, LEDs actually make interesting uh, what they call varicaps or uh, tuning diodes or whatever you want to call them. They basically vary in capacitance when they're reverse biased. So that'll actually control the frequency of this little transmitter and I should be able to do some fun stuff with that later today. I think though instead of doing that right away though I'm going to power off my uh, soldering iron and dash down to HSC and pick up some varicaps because I actually need a variable capacitor in this to actually do some gross tuning of the overall uh, structure of the thing. So off and away to the surplus store. Hope you're all having a good great weekend. This has been Mark Van Wettering, Brainwagon Blog.